Hi, good morning everybody. This is uh, Nicholas Teo from uh, CMC Markets here in Singapore. Uh, today, the 30th of uh, July. Um, last couple of days in the month. Uh, but anyway, the big news was last night, nothing happened. Uh, and in itself, it was actually news because markets saw a bit of a relief rally. Nothing happened in the sense that the Fed did not move. Uh, this is one of uh, re four remaining uh, moves or uh, me scheduled meetings that they have uh, till year end. Uh, I think all eyes are now on September the 16th where they are scheduled to uh, once more uh, 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 come up with some sort of announcement or decision down there. But even before that, we have GDP numbers in the US tonight. Uh, and this could actually uh, 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 trigger on certain things purely because uh, uh, I think the market is perhaps a bit more nervous about seeing growth, inflation, uh, 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 numbers sort of creeping in, which suggests an earlier than later liftoff. Uh, but still, uh, there, there are quite a few uh, so-called normalization bets which one can be uh, can, can look at. Um, I We spoke about gold this morning in our morning note. Let me just pull up this chart. Uh, gold has actually been stabilizing after that huge or rather that big plunge below the 11, 1140 or 1140 so called level. Let me just draw this line down here. Uh, now this, this, this plunge was obviously a, a stop, uh, stop loss sort of a, 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 a lead kind of move. But essentially, gold at this level looks also quite vulnerable to another move down, with this being a, just a temporary pause or consolidation that I think uh, would probably bring on a, a, a bigger move down. Now, essentially, uh, if you were to, let me just draw some lines again. Uh, and, and I use this quite often purely just to show you the degree of, pot you know, potential degree of, of, of a move that can come uh, once that particular product has sort of flipped. Uh, now essentially we're looking at maybe around uh, a, a level of equal distance you know this to this. So I mean uh, these are just rough indications no doubt but it just shows you that there is still a maybe potential for a downside move from here. Uh, obviously if not we get some sort of a good news or good trigger points that will cause this to go up like for example a very weak GDP number ironically uh, then we can see this being once more a sort of a resistance level uh, that was once a key support uh, the other news uh, perhaps I mean to talk about this morning in the stock front Singapore markets uh, is SIA SIA came in with very good results last night uh, in terms of profitability doubling what they were uh, the same period of last year. Uh, this came on the back of a lot of uh, margin improvement from fuel savings. Fuel is obviously one of their biggest cost elements together with uh, labour uh, uh, where, where SIA is concerned. Now this stock technically looks quite good actually because this rebound down here, uh, every time it comes down uh, to a new low, it has actually held the old high. Uh, which means that you know that trend could still very much be you know be, be intact on the way up. Uh, it remains to be seen uh, because it's being tested right now. But we could potentially see a a a a, a continuation of that uh, of that move uh, 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 headed north again. Uh, but you know obviously if this gets broken the eleven. 20, 11, 30 level or so, uh, we could see the next support being only down here at 1080 or so. Uh, several stories for you uh, to, to, to follow today. Thank you very much.